Hi everyone, I am Sivu Prasad, working as an associate professor in CAC department in Guntur Engineering College. In this class, we are going to discuss about documentation software architecture in software architecture and design pattern subject. Documenting software architecture. So you know the meaning of documenting. So generally, for whatever the activities we are doing, we are writing the procedure, whatever the steps you have taken, why you have taken, and for what purpose you have taken, who has taken that responsibility, all those things you write. You call it as documentation. Everyone knows about user manuals. So when you purchase any electronic gadgets, you are getting some manuals. User manual, that means how the end user is able to use this product is mentioned in user manual. In the same way, in the manufacturing section, how the product can be developed is also written in some for document format. You call it as a blueprint of the document or architecture document. The ar architecture document is a means for educating the people who need an overview. New developers, finding sponsors or visitors to the project. So the new architects are interested in learning how these, how the predecessors tackled the difficult issues of the system and why any particular decisions were made. So documentation plays important role in maintenance. If any new person has joined in your software team, they may not able to directly work on the project because whatever the variables, whatever the conditions you have used in your prog program or whatever the databases you have used in your uh, software, the, end, the new user may not be able to identify. So what the things you have used, what are the components you have used, why you have used. Practically, it is not possible to go and tell to each person. Instead of that, what the software technical people are doing, simply they are mentioning what are the things they have used, what are the features they have used, why they have used, where they have used. They are writing with complete description. You call it as documentation. Your algorithms, flow charts, pseudo codes, IO charts, and this uh, disk uh, comments, all those things comes under your documentation, including programs. The one copy of your original program has to be stored as documentation. Because later on, the people who have worked in the development team may be moving to other projects or may leave the organization. As the people left from one project, move from one project to another project, they cannot stop due to lack of people. So the project must be continuing irrespective of the persons. So they need to write information in some permanent storage. It need not to be on a paper, even it may be on the soft copy or hard copy. But one copy of the information has to be maintained in permanent format. You call it as documentation. So it is to educate the people, it is to create awareness. So the documentation is both prospective and descriptive. So prospective in the sense it specifies you should it should be true like that. Descriptive means it it why it is true by considering all the preceding preceding factors it decides why it is true. So it describes the proceedings also. So the documentation serves as both prospective as well as descriptive. So prescriptive in the sense just you follow the rules and regulations. You don't know the reason why. For example, in the uh, medical field, the doctor give the prescript prescriptive prescription. So just you follow the medicine. You don't know why, what are the medicines you are using, why they are using, what are the side effects, what are the consequences, all those things we don't know. Just we follow. Whereas a description means if they are giving all those details, what medicine you are using, why you are using, what are its ingredients, all the details you are giving, then it is called as descriptive. So our documentation serves as both prescri prescriptive and descriptive. It satisfies the different needs of different users. It satisfies the, the user's uh, stakeholder's requirements. 
the stakeholders may be the end users developers architect analyst whoever it may be so for different people it, they have different requirements the software or uh, the documentation fulfills the requirements of all the users so it, it contains different components for different stakeholders for example if you consider banking software so in the banking software user interface and interacting through mobile and everything is for end user but end user is unable to modify the account balance after making the transaction the data will be modified automatically but as an end user you are unable to type the numbers whereas the, the manager has the power to create a new account to modify the balances etc so different users have different tasks so the software documentation serves the different requirements of the different users it helps to educate the users like uh, i said user manual even though the product is new you are new to the product still you are able to use the products for example have you got training on uh, usage of mobile phone definitely no have you got training on uh, playing of uh, video games definitely no just you are seeing the manuals and following like that it serves as the guiding guide for the users the architecture serves as the blueprint for both the system and project development team blueprint means the original copy to be followed you call it as blueprint the architect holds the key to post post deployment system understanding maintenance and mining efforts maintenance it is uh, maintenance means making the necessary modifications to make the system to cope up with the regular changes you call it as maintenance you know bike maintenance house maintenance even after purchasing the bike also you need to make some changes in the bike you call it as maintenance in the same as software modifiability is there so you need to make necessary modifications without much difficult with ease with minimum efforts if you are able to make the changes in the system so you say the product is good otherwise it is very difficult for modifications practically you are not going to ask the developers and asking every time so automatically you are following the manual and making the necessary changes so you call it as a maintenance purpose that we are seeing the documentation and making the maintenance for example if you want to make changes in your mobile phone settings so do you call to the mobile manufacturer or follow the manual yes definitely you follow the manual you open the manual book or you go to the help menu and you make the necessary changes changing the volume or changing the call timings whatever the changes you want you are able to make it manually automatically the architecture is the conceptual glue that holds every phase of the project together for all its stakeholders so the the project contains different components for different users but these components are not in the isolated format all these components are integrated with each other end user module is integrated with the back end user module for example you consider in the online banking exam user is interact interacting with at atm machine but this atm module is linked with the banking manager so the banking manager software uh, that module is linked with the rbi rbi staff so all these internal modules are linked with it together every end user feels that the project is completely meant for me but in the back side all these modules are interconnected and interrelated with each other the project uh, the documentation gives the description of all these components and how these components are interacting with each other and intercommunicating with each other so who use this architectural documentation all the simply answer is all the stakeholders all the stakeholders who are the stakeholders so as a system analyst in the sdlc you know system analyst designer architect all these uh, persons are using this uh, documentation next business manager to give the data about the functionality of the organization customer as an end user customer all the stakeholders are able to use this documentation only the difference is what portion of the data they are using for what purpose they are using that is only the difference but the documentation is useful for all the stakeholders now you consider for analyst 
it is responsible for analyzing the architecture to make sure it meets certain critical quality attributes quality attributes this is very very important already you know the attributes the quality attributes are partially depending on the architectural phase the at the time of developing the software that is at the time of analyzing the requirements the analyst identifies what quality measures you need to have that is the documentation next one uses analyzing the satisfaction of the quality attribute requirements based upon the architecture the analyst has an interaction with the end user just before developing to gather the information so at the time of gathering the information he captures the functional requirements as well as quality requirements those quality requirements will be placed in the documentation or from the documentation the analyst extract the quality attributes next one is architect is responsible for developing the architecture the architecture responsibility is to develop the architectural and its documentation so it, it is a trade off among the competing requirements and design approaches aesthetic approaches and functional approach they need to make a comparison which one get high priority that is decided by the architect next one is business manager is also called as functional manager what are the functions what are the works to be performed that is decided by the functional manager he is also called as a data analyst the organization for example as a technical person you are going to develop a software for a banking you may not have thorough knowledge about all banking operations generally what we know depositing the cash withdrawing the cash but in the inside of the bank there are so many works are there as a technical person you may not have idea about the functionality so that functional requirements are given by the business manager he recognize the entities and what are the operations they need to perform okay next one is customer as a as an end user he requires both functional functional attributes as well as quality attributes so you call it as end user satisfaction if end user satisfies automatically all the requirements are satisfied as a customer if the customer is not satisfied whatever the quality you are giving there will be no use the final target is customer satisfaction so assuring the required functionality requirement as well as quality requirement as an end user he requires both functions as well as quality okay next documentation cross views we see the documentation in three different views how what why so how the documentation is laid in the organization and uh, it contains view catalogs and view templates so how this documentation is prepared to fulfill the needs of the user sufficiently this part this part consists of viewing the catalog and view templates appear the glossary of the term terminology like that they represent in the how format next one is in the what what represents what is the struct what is the architecture and what is the information that remains to be captured beyond the views themselves and what is the requirements of the users like that they will analyze in the what document why document so why the architecture is prepared in what context the system external con con constraints and what has been imposed what are the uh, what is the re relational relationships between the components all those things that will be analyzed in the why documentation okay